All right, ladies and gentlemen, what I'd like you to do. What I'd like to do, ladies and gentlemen, is look into dividing this um, by a factor, all right? Now, let's go back real quick and let's just kind of talk about as far as when we're talking about factoring and division, all right? Now, let's use some numbers that we're kind of familiar with. If I said divide 4 into 12, well, we know that 4 divides into 12 three times, right? You guys are pretty familiar with that. The next thing is, what if I said factor 12? I said break 12 down to its factors, right? One way you could factor 12, it'd be 4 times 3. Now, I tell you this because remember when we practiced factoring, not with numbers like this, but we did factoring like this, x squared plus 5x plus 4, right? When we did factoring, what are we finding? We're finding two values, two binomials in this case, that multiply to give you this. When I say factor this, this times this, the two factors multiply to give you 12, correct? Yes. OK. And we know that they multiply because 1, since they're factors, that means 1 divides into the other. So when I say factor this, what I need you guys to understand, if I'm going to factor this, and we factor this to x plus 4 times x plus 1, what that means is if I was going to take this and divide it into that, This divided into this is going to produce me x plus 1 as the answer, right? These are your two factors. That means this times this multiplies to give you that. Well, since they both multiply to give you this answer, you know that 1, that they both divide into them the other amount times. Does that kind of make a little sense? It's just like 4. 4 and 3 are factors of 12 because 4 divides into 12 three times x plus 4 and x plus 1 are factors of x squared plus 5x plus 4 because x plus 4 divides into x squared plus 5x plus 4 x plus 1 times. OK? Now, let's go ahead and take a look at how are we now going to apply this up here. So if I say x minus 3 divides into that, then I can say if it divides into it, then can I say it's a factor? Yes. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to work on this by synthetic division. Um, OK, let's actually go back to here real quick. x squared plus 5x plus 4. When you factor, let's say it equals 0. You factor that to x plus 4 times x plus 1 equals 0. What's the next step? Does anybody remember the next step to do here? To solve. If you want to find the value of 0, just put it in. Yeah, run does. You set them both equal to 0. OK. Ladies and gentlemen, these are what you call your factors. Why are they factors? Because this times this gives you 0. Over here, when you solve for them, you take your factors and you set them equal to 0. You can say now that x equals negative 4 and x equals negative 1. Those are what we call the zeros. Okay? Those are going to be actually the exact value where the graph is going to cross the x-axis. So I'm going through this whole spiel. You guys just want to get into the, to the procedure part? OK. This divided by this. What we're going to do is we're going to do synthetic division for you. All right? Um, Carter. Carter. So what we're going to do is the synthetic division part. All right? All I want you guys to do is when given a factor that you're going to divide into it, as long as that factor is a binomial, it's a binomial to the first degree, what you're going to do is find the 0. So the first step is find the 0 of your divisor. So I do x minus 3 equals 0. Add 3. x equals 3. OK? So you find the 0. The next thing, do you guys remember long division where you do, like long division, I showed you guys this. Right? You long division like this. Synthetic division, you kind of do like an upside down one. Okay? Then what you're going to do is you're going to take the coefficient of each term. All right? So you're going to do 2, negative 3, negative 10, and 7. So take the coefficient of each term. 
Now, if you're missing a term, let's pretend that I don't have a um, 3x squared. It just goes to 3x squared to 7. Well, that means you don't have an x term, right? You don't have an x term. So therefore, you'd have to put a 0 in for the 10. If there is no x term, you've got to make sure you put a 0 there. All right, so here's the process. You guys are going to want to write this down as follow as you write this in there. So the problem goes like this. First number, you bring down. It's like a freebie, right? We all get a freebie, Mallory, so you bring down the first one. So Mallory, when I go and check your test, I'm pretty sure that John, if he wrote this down, everybody can probably get that first, first number correct. Okay. Then now it's going to get a little bit tricky. Diagonally, you multiply. 2 times 3 is going to be 6. Then, vertically, you add. Negative 3 plus 6 is positive 3. Then again, vertically, you multiply. 3 times 3 is 9. Add vertically. Negative 10 plus 9 is negative 1. Then multiply. Negative 1 times 3 is negative 3. 7 plus negative 3 is now a positive 4. Now. Since what we have, if we have a 0 at the end, that means we, ha we have a remainder of 0. So if there's a remainder, does something, does something divide into something evenly if there's a remainder? No. So therefore, x minus 3 does not divide into this. So can we say x minus 3 is a factor of it? No. No, right? Therefore, this is not a 0 of the polynomial, but we'll get to that in a second. So how are we going to write our final answer? Because we have a remainder. You guys need to follow this. It goes. Remainder. Even if it's a 0, that's always your remainder. The last term is always your remainder. Remainder, constant, linear, quadratic. And you just keep on getting larger and larger. You go to cubic, to um, quartic, uh, synctic. You just keep on getting bigger and bigger. So therefore, my final answer is 2x squared plus 3x minus 1. And then how do you write your remainder? Since it's positive, I'm going to add it. You take your remainder and you, and you put it below your divisor, or above your divisor. So that is your final answer. So the, minus, so the divisor, the divisor, whatever you call it, the x minus 3, that'll be whatever number is below the 7 or below that? Below your remainder.